first and foremost, all thanks and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Wawrakakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. On down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where or whom they may be or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons and daughters also. The water to Yahweh Shai, because without him endearing and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. Second Peter's chapter three and verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the power wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And that word fervent, that's where you get the word fever. Now, seeing that we're hearing of different rumors of war, we're hearing about the mark of the beast, we're hearing about famine, we're hearing about a blackout, we're hearing all these different things that may sound negative to outside sources, but those of us who are in the know, those of us who put their trust in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, we shouldn't be in fear. We shouldn't be in the spirit of being, you know, regretful seeing the collapse of this society. In fact, we should want this place to go down speedily. We should want this place to go down quickly. When the Lord returns, when Yahweh Shai returns, he's returning to bring down Babylon and to deliver his elect from various parts of the earth, wherever they may be. Not one of his are going to be left behind. Not one stone is going to be left unturned. When Yahweh Shai HaMashiach comes to deliver and to destroy. Let's read this again in 2 Peter 3 and 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the power. So let's go into that word hasting in Greek 46, 92. The word is sputo. To haste, make haste. To desire earnestly. Probably strengthened from Greek 42, 28 to speed. Then it says study in quotation and in brackets. That is urge on by implication to await eagerly haste unto. We should have a earnest desire to see this place go down and see the return of our Lord and Savior. That's the correct spirit to be in. Now, if your spirit is wanting this society to thrive you want this society to go on just a little bit longer so you can you know make that extra hundred thousand dollars or you want this society to go on a little bit longer because you're still pondering on ways to make it in this world you still have a foot in this world we have to be totally withdrawn from this world seeing that Yahweh by shimmy i was shy is going to destroy this place AKA Babylon, right? Off the face of the earth. And all of the elements are going to be dissolved, melted away with fervent heat, being that nuclear wind from them thermonuclear missiles. Okay? And this is not a rumor. This is all biblical prophecy. So we should be hastening unto the coming of our Lord and Savior and the destruction of Babylon. Okay? Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. So Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. So Yahweh Shai has made it known unto us what type of spirit to be in through the words that are written in the Bible. 
and we're not making up our own words. OK, now let's go down to 17, seeing that we should be hastening in the day. Psalms 40 and 17. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my power. That's the correct spirit to be in. We should be in the spirit of hoping for the Lord to hasten um, the return of the Messiah. We should want the Heavenly Father to speed this up because Yahweh Shai cannot return until the Heavenly Father tells him it's okay. And that's what order is, man. As powerful as Yahweh Shai is and him being the top guy, he doesn't jump the gun when it comes with the Father. And the same with us. We shouldn't jump the gun when it comes to Yahweh Shai. Now, we understand that we are still in captivity. We haven't been delivered just yet. So we shouldn't be taking matters into our own hands. We're not, you know, sent on the streets to fight. We're not sent on the streets to just yell at people and bicker for no reason. Our lessons should be edifying. Our lessons should have um, fruit behind it. OK. Let's read verse. 17 psalms 40 and 17 again but i am poor and needy yet the lord thinketh upon me so although we're poor and needy the lord's thinking about us although we're not rich and famous although we're not that known by the whole world right some of us may not be able to grow a beard some of us may not be six foot tall some of us may be a little overweight some of us um, maybe going bald. Some of us, um, may have, you know, bodily dysfunctions that you don't want to speak on, but guess what? The Lord still thinks upon you. The Lord still thinks upon his elect. Let's read forward. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my power. So we should be hastening in the day and wanting Yahweh Shai to return. Okay? And although we're poor and needy, Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai is thinking upon us. And remember, the Lord loves humility. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 138. In verse 6 Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. So as high as Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah is, he has respect unto the lowly. Now he doesn't show a respecter of persons, but he has a respect unto his people Israel, and within that he has a respect unto the lowly, because that is a characteristic of the elect. Whether you're a Israelite male or an Israelite female, if you are of the Lord, you will have characteristics of humility. So even though we're in a, a poor and low state, we don't know what tomorrow holds for us. We have our shortcomings. We're not perfect. Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai still thinks upon us and he has respect unto those with a lowly mind, those who are humble, all right? Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Let's go to 1 Peter's chapter 5 and verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For the power resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of the power that he may exalt you in due time. So as where waiting on Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, we should still keep a lowly mind and not get ahead of ourselves. Regardless of all the great mysteries and revelations that the Lord may give us, no matter what, we have to stay humble because it is not of ourselves. I can promise you that. Verse seven, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. So we understand, although destruction is coming, destruction awaits, 
Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai cares for his elect. Okay? And another reason why we should be hastening unto the day of our Lord's return, seeing that he's fair, when he returns, we're going to receive glory right alongside with him. Why wouldn't you want that? This is the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. If ye then be risen with Mashiach, seek those things which are above, where Mashiach sitteth on the right hand of the power. So where your heart is, that's where your affection is going to be. Okay, if you focus on the kingdom of heaven, then that means your mind is on spiritual things. But if your desire is trying to accumulate wealth in this world, how to get the bag now, which there's nothing wrong with making money. We need money. It's a weapon. Right. But our whole priority shouldn't be how to make money, how to um, win people through bribery and sorcery, you know, ways to, you know, use your brother through usury. Verse two, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Mashiach and the power. So our life is pretty much dead right now. We work nine to fives. We might own businesses, but we don't own businesses that are, you know, all throughout the U.S. You know, we might own a lot. We might own a local business or whatnot. And it may, you know, be put in your shoes to where your business may do OK. You may work a job where you make OK money, but nevertheless, our life is hid here because we're not selling out. You're not going to see us getting paid millions of dollars throwing the football, although some of us could have done that. You're not going to see us making millions of dollars, you know, holding on a microphone, singing lyrics of death and destruction, although some of us could have done that. You're not going to see us being accepted by this world because we're not coming with a world uh, world friendly doctrine. OK. We're basically dead right now. Because our glory is going to come when our Lord returns and we have to know these things. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Mashiach in the power with Mashiach, who is our life shall appear. So Yahweh Shai is our life and you'll have people say, get a life, get a job. What you're doing is in vain. Look, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, that's my life. And those of you who are like minded, I'm sure you agree. He is your life. When Mashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So that's what we have to look forward to. Verse 5 Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So it's better to go into the kingdom maimed than to have all your members and be casted in to the lake of fire. So being in this ministry, we have to mortify our fleshly desires. We have to mortify ways of the flesh. Now let's go into that word mortify in Greek 3499. To make dead, or sorry, let's read the word here. Necru which almost sounds like necromancer, right? Necru, to make dead, to put to death, slay, worn out, of an impotent old man, to deprive of power, destroy the strength of. So we have to destroy the strength of our flesh. And that's a battle that's going to be ongoing until we are changed. I tell you what, man, our flesh is one hell of an opponent, okay? To deprive of power, destroy the strength of. From Greek 3498, to deaden, that is. To subdue, be dead, mortify. So we have to kill the ways of the flesh. We have to kill the ways of mortality and think like immortals. And how would an immortal think? Serving Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Keeping the commandments, 
All right. Now, you know what? I'll just read this again. Colossians 3 and 5. Mortify or kill, make dead, therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, we got to kill that, right? Uncleanliness, you got to kill that. Inordinate affection, you got to kill that. Because see, this world tries to tell you, you don't have to make no changes. Evil concupiscence, let's go into that word concupiscence in Greek 1939. The word is epithumia, desire, craving, longing, desire for what is forbidden, lust. That's easy, you know, coveting something that doesn't belong to you, whether it's a, um, a possession of someone. And remember, the scriptures also tell you that when a man gets a wife, he gets a possession. So desiring a man's wife. Desiring a man's house, his car, to the point of you wanting to kill him for it. You're wanting to supplant him for it. You got to kill those desires off because those are not the characteristics of someone who's going to make it. Okay? Evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. So typically when you covet something, you're making it an idol. That's heavy. So let's go forward because we have to understand that Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai is soon to return. This place that we're, we're walking on, this place known as Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed. And seeing that, you know, these things are soon going to come to pass. We have to understand that right now we still have a duty to do. We still have things that we have to um, tighten up on. We still have, you know, people who still need to be taught. We might feel in our minds like, you know, all the elect is sealed, which I don't believe all the elect is sealed, which I don't believe that's going to be official or officiated until the missiles get sent off. But seeing that we're at that point of being so close to the end, we just have to be on point. We have to make sure that we're following the basics. Because a lot of men, they want all the deep breakdowns. They want all the great mysteries. But they want to skip over all the, all the things that help you grow, which is the milk. All right? Let's go forward. Uh, what scripture is that? I'm trying to think. Let's go to. Ah, uh, what is that scripture? You know what I'll do? Let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 34. And verse one. Verse two. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord Yahweh with me and let us exalt his name together. So seeing that we're looking to be saved and delivered, is it not important to have the names? Because you'll have a lot of men, they'll tell you the names don't matter. We don't have that right now. There's no way we could possibly know something like that. There are a, a lot of liars and you have to be careful. OK, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Why should we exalt his name? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18 and 10. The name of the Lord, Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So all the elect are going to have the name. That's important. All those who are humble, all those who put their trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all those, and I'm speaking to the Israelite man first, all those who are going to receive that glory when Yahweh Shai returns, they're going to have the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Those names are a strong tower, and those names are to be exalted. We need the names to make it up out of here. And not everybody has those names. 
is actually a mystery that's hidden in plain sight. And I say hidden in plain sight because we're openly expressing what the names are, but you'll have many, they'll deny it, they'll reject it. They just can't accept it. Proverbs 30 and 4. Who hath ascended into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? What is his son's name? If thou canst tell. And it's asked in such a manner because it's a secret. Because if it wasn't a secret, this question wouldn't be asked. You'll just be like, oh, that's easy. I'll just turn to Matthews 1 and 1 where, you know, it goes into uh, the Messiah's name being Jesus, right? Or go to Psalm, uh, what's that? Psalms or Proverbs. I ain't, I ain't went to that scripture in a while. What is that? 64 and 8. Let me see if I can, what is that? Proverbs. Uh, might be Psalms. 64. That's not it. Psalms chapter 68 and 4. Sing unto the power. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. And it says, Jah, and rejoice before him. And then somebody will be like, see, I know the Lord's name. All I got to do is go to Psalm 68 and 4. And the, and the heavenly father's name is right there. It's Jah. And then if I go to Matthews 1 and 1, the book of the generations, and then it says of Jesus Christ. And then you'll say, see, I know the father's name, which is Jah. And then the son's name is Jesus Christ. No, the reason why it was asked in such a manner is because those names are a secret and not everybody has those names. OK, if you could just flip in the Bible and find those names, this question wouldn't have to be asked. But it was prophetic that we would fall away from our heritage. And that included losing the the names of the Heavenly Father and his son. OK, so let's read Proverbs 30 and 4 again. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? His name is Yahweh. What is his son's name? His name is Yahweh Shai, if thou canst tell. And the elect can tell because the elect have the secrets. Okay? You need the names to be blessed, man. All right? And most people, they're just not going to accept that. They're stuck on Jesus or whatever else they believe in. Let's go to Joel chapter 2 and 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, speaking to you Israelites, shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. So deliverance is only for Israel. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So the remnant is going to call upon the names of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai and be delivered. Okay? And those who call on the names of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai are going to be heard because they're going to show humility. And a lot of people, they don't like that. To be humble, it takes a sense of vulnerability. It takes a lot of casting off your, your, your self-pride, your self-ego. Okay? It's not easy. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach, chapter 35 and 17. The prayer of the humble pierceth the clouds. Until it come nigh, he will not be comforted, and he will not depart till the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. That's why the prayer of the elect they're going to be heard because we're going to keep on praying. We're going to keep on hoping until our desires are met. But it says the prayer of the humble pierceth the clouds. Those who call on the names of the Lord, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you also have to come with that humble spirit. Okay? So I'm going to go on ahead and close this lesson. Um, I think I pretty much made my point. So I pray, Lord willing, that this was simple and edifying. All praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Wa Rakakwada, Shalom.